Fast storage has become a true commodity, and hopefully it will only get bigger and faster. For new builds, NVM drives have become the norm, with prices close to those of SATA SSDs and file transfer speeds that are several times higher. For older systems, SATA SSDs offer a great upgrade option with upload times similar to those of NVMe drives. Yet, if you want to save a huge library of files that you open one by one, traditional hard drives still offer the best value. Another consideration is whether you can install the drive inside your PC or laptop, or you are willing to give up some performance in favor of the ability to carry the drive with you. Our best storage picks are divided into six categories based on form factor and intended use as presented below. With Micron's 176 layer TLC flash, the Seagate Fire Cuda 530 offers sustained write speeds up to twice as fast as those of our previous pick, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. In shorter transfers, the Sabrent drive already saturated the PSI 4.0 interface with speeds up to 7000 MB per second, but it's not really cheaper these days than the Seagate option. With a Fison E18 controller, the Fire Cuda 530 will also load games and apps more quickly, but the differences will be measured in seconds, not minutes. Two things set the Seagate drive apart even from drives that use the same components, such as the Kingston KC3000 and Corsair MP600 Pro XT. The first has an endurance rating of 2550 terabytes written, TBW, for the 2 terabytes version, compared to about 1500 in its competitors. The other is a 3-year data recovery service, in addition to the 5-year warranty, a worthy addition when the data on your drive is worth more to you than the drive itself. The 2 terabytes version, which writes faster than the smaller capacity ones, starts at $320, and for $10 more you'll get an elegant heatsink. The 1 terabyte version is almost as fast for half the price, but the 500 gigabytes version is significantly slower, possibly creating bottlenecks even when writing from a PC 3.0 drive. A 4 terabytes version is also available. If you want to use your SSD to store your game library and don't copy hundreds of gigabytes on a daily basis, WD's SN850 currently offers the best value. Thanks to the company's G2 controller, games load times are indistinguishable between the SN850 and the Fire Cuda 530. The 2TB version goes for $240, though you may need to spend extra on a heatsink as it has been noted to get fairly warm under heavy loads. It's got the brand cachet and is no performance slouch either. The Samsung 980 Pro, read our review, is a fast and efficient drive, but at $270 for 2TB it's priced too close to the Fire Cuda 530 and too far from the SN850. On a sale, however, it can be a cheaper alternative to the Fire Cuda, or a more efficient alternative to the SN850. Compared to the older 970 Pro, the company's 980 Pro takes a hit to endurance, as Samsung shifted from the 970 Pro's 2 bit MLC flash to denser, 3 bit TLC in the 980 Pro. This has led to a 50% reduction in Samsung's DBW ratings for this model over the 970 Pro, coming in at 1,200 DBW on the flagship 2TB drive. However, Samsung offers its well-built and mature Magician SSD software. If you have an old PC that doesn't have PC 4.0 support or even an M.2 slot, you can still enjoy PC 4.0 speeds. The Western Digital AN1500 connects to your motherboard similarly to a graphics card, and uses 8 PC 3.0 lanes, enabling a reading speed of 6500 MB per second, almost like the best drives that use 4 PC 4.0 lanes. The writing speed of about 4000 MB per second is less impressive, but still better than any M.2 PC 3.0 drive. At $425 for 2 terabytes, it may not look like the best value, but it's still way cheaper than buying a CPU and a motherboard with PC 4.0 support alongside another drive. If your motherboard, CPU only supports PC 3.0, or you don't often transfer large files, you can save some money going with a high quality PC 3.0 SSD, and the Samsung 970 EVO Plus is the best of them. Unlike the newer and barely cheaper Samsung 980, non-pro, the Evo Plus has on-board DRAM, 
so its performance won't degrade as you fill it up. Also, unlike other drives, it uses TLC flash, so it won't slow down to a crawl if you fill a large portion of its free space at once. The 970 EVO Plus nearly saturates the PC 3.0 interface with 3500 megabytes per second and 3200 megabytes per second read and write speeds, respectively. While the 500 gigabytes version can be had for $82, the 1 terabyte one is sold for a more sensible $115. The 2 terabytes version offers the best value at $214. At the time of writing, the 2 terabytes version of our previous pick, the WD Black SN750, is available for $200 and similarly offers generally better performance than the newer, Dramless SN750 SE. Performance will be indistinguishable from that of the 970 EVO Plus except for long writes, where the WD drive will be slightly slower. If your system does support C4.0, the Dramless SN770 is a good deal at $210 for 2 terabytes, $110 for 1 terabyte, and even $65 for 500 gigabytes. With current SSD prices, we can no longer recommend any mechanical hard drive as a main system drive. Yet, Seagate's Iron Wolf NAS drives remain unbeatable if you want a secondary drive with a ton of storage. The Iron Wolf drives are state-of-the-art as far as consumer hard drives go, leveraging PMR, perpendicular magnetic recording, platters running at 7200 RPM to cram up to 16 terabytes of data in a regular 3.5-inch form factor drive. Being NAS drives, the Iron Wolf series doesn't come cheap for a disk drive as it's designed to withstand performance-intensive workloads involving constant read-slash-write operations for days on end. There are, however, more reliable as a result, come in higher capacities, and perform well, again, for a hard drive. You can find Iron Wolf HDDs in capacities of 1 slash 2 thirds of a terabyte, 5900 RPM, 256 megabytes cache, 6 terabytes, 5600 RPM, 256 megabytes cache, and 8 slash 10 slash 12 sixteenths of a terabyte, 7200 RPM, 256 megabytes cache. Moreover, these drives utilize conventional magnetic recording, CMR, technology instead of shingled magnetic recording, SMR, so you won't get the right performance penalty associated with SMR, which manufacturers employ to produce cheaper, denser disks. Inevitably, this also means paying a small premium over budget drives. For example, an 8TB Iron Wolf drive will set you back around $185, while an identical capacity Barracuda can be had for $144. WD added a plus tier to its red series of 3.5-inch NAS HDDs following the SMR-CMR controversy. These CMR drives have been competitively priced with Seagate's Iron Wolf series across their entire range of 2 3 4 6 8 10 12 14 of a terabyte models. There are, however, minor spec differences between the two, including RPM speeds and cache size. WD's Red Plus drives offer more cache in the lower capacity models, but Seagate's Iron Wolf range comes with a 5 year warranty, unlike WD's 3 year warranty for the Red Plus series. If you just want an inexpensive, Bare Bones HDD, the Seagate Barracuda line has a variety of options to get you the most storage for your money. A capacious 2TB model can be had for just $53, or you can double the space with the $85 4TB version. The Barracuda is also available in 3TB, 6TB, and 8TB variants. The 2TB model of the Barracuda is the sweet spot spinning at 7200 rpm and including 256 megabytes of cache the one terabyte model spins at the same speed but only includes 64 megabytes of cache the three terabytes and above models slow down to 5400 rpm but we think that's reasonable for the price a larger cache is useful for storing frequently used files without needing to keep them on the slower disk Having speedy storage on the go can be a lifesaver in some situations and a routine requirement in others. External drive enclosures will let you turn any internal drive into an external one, and vice versa in the future, offering features such as USB 3.2, Gen 2x2, or Thunderbolt 4 speeds, fingerprint readers and water slash shock resistance. Yet, if you want some of those advanced features but can get by with a moderate capacity, all-in-one external drives can offer a good value. The Samsung T7 Touch is a great example. Provided you have USB 3.1, or 3.2 Gen 2x1, connector, 
you'll get up to 1050 megabytes per second reads and 1000 megabytes per second writes inside a shockproof metal enclosure that should survive the odd drop. If you want more protection, get gear specifically made cases start at $10. Sadly, the drive doesn't have an IP rating for water or dust resistance. The T7 Touch adds an extra layer of security with a fingerprint sensor inside its square activity light. The feature adds just $20 to the price over the standard T7, and having a fingerprint locked SSD on your business trip or holiday might just be worth paying the slight premium. The device is compact enough that it can fit in the palm of your hand or thrown in your pocket, measuring 85 by 57 by 8 mm. The T7 and T7 Touch have a 3-year warranty, come in 500 gigabytes, 1 terabyte, and 2 terabytes capacities and are slightly more expensive than their closest rival, the Crucial X8. It is justifiable though, as Samsung's offerings feature 256-bit hardware encryption and faster, higher endurance DLC flash versus cheaper, denser QLC memory found inside the Crucial X8. The cost and capacity advantages of mechanical hard drives become more appealing when it comes to storing data outside of your PC. Backups, media and other important files can often take dBs of space and need to be stored externally for safety. If you want the most reliable external drive, you should put one of our recommended internal drives inside an external enclosure with a power connector. That way, you also won't lose all access to your data because of a broken external connector. Yet, if you prefer simplicity, WD's MyBook stands out above the competition by offering lots of reliable storage space on the cheap. There are plenty of storage options to choose from, ranging between 3TB to 18TB. You can get a 4TB model for just $82 or a capacious 12TB drive for $220. Those with even higher storage requirements can opt for the Duo version that offers up to an insane 36TB of storage space for $2,500. My book comes with the XFAT file system by default alongside WD's backup software for Windows-slash-Mac PCs, and is also compatible with Apple's Time Machine. With a slow-spinning disk and a USB 3.0 interface, this drive won't be winning any speed contests with mediocre 170 to 180 megabytes per second sequential reads and writes, and even slower random transfer and I.O. performance. Although these speeds are unacceptable on a boot drive, you are unlikely to be loading applications or games from the MyBook where its main purpose is offering cost-effective, reliable storage for your less frequently accessed data. There are a few additional, but minor quirks with the MyBook. It uses a microB USB 3.0 connector, to USB-A, unlike USB-A slash USB-C interfaces that have now become more commonplace. The drive doesn't have an activity light and needs a separate, included 12 volts power adapter to work, making it better suited for users with fixed workspaces. WD's MyBook comes with password-protected 256-bit hardware encryption and a 3-year warranty, which is longer than its Seagate rival and overall makes it the best, inexpensive external storage currently available. For those looking to get portable storage on a budget, WD's My Passport Ultra hits the middle ground in terms of capacity, performance, portability, and price. With a sleek, pocket-friendly design, you can get a 2TB My Passport Ultra for $80 or a 4TB for $120, with the drive rounded off by two more, 1TB and 5TB, options. This model uses a modern USB-C port, USB adapter included, and features other niceties such as an activity light, onboard hardware encryption, useful software utilities, and a class-leading 3-year warranty. Performance of the My Passport Ultra is nothing to write home about. But its tilde 130 megabytes per second read and write speeds are on par with the competition and easier to accept considering the price, features, and daily usability. It's now more affordable than ever to set up a home NAS for your file sharing and media needs. Synology's latest $300 disk station DS220 Plus makes the best case for itself in this category, offering the most value for entry-level home NAS users. This DS220 Plus comes with two empty drive bays, supports up to 32 terabytes of max storage for three, five halves 0.5 inch SATA HDDs and 2.5 inch SATA SSDs, with transfer rates of up to 225 megabytes per second reads and 192 megabytes per second writes. It packs more powerful internals, including a dual-core Celeron J4025 chip, 2 GB of DDR4 RAM, expandable up to 6 GB, 2x1 Gigabit LAN ports with link aggregation and 2x USB 3.0, 5 GB per second, ports. 
There's also support for 4K transcoding for high-quality media streaming, while RAID types include SHR, BASIC, JBOD, RAID 0 and RAID 1. An M.2 slot is still lacking here though, which means you'll need to shell out more for costlier alternatives like the 2 Bay DS720 Plus or 4 Bay DS920 Plus, see below, if faster, NVMe cached storage is a priority. There's also no support for an expansion unit to add more storage down the road. These are the DS220 Plus's only key weaknesses at this price point. However, Synology's class-leading software makes up for its hardware shortfalls and keeps it ahead of rivals in terms of the software experience, making the DS220 Plus our top pick in the home NAS category. Synology's DS920 Plus stands out as a capable 4-bay home NAS solution with support for up to 64TB of raw capacity, 2 NVMe SSDs for cache, and a total of 9 drives with a separate expansion unit. It's powered by a quad-core Intel Celeron J4125, features 4GB DD4 RAM, expandable up to 8GB, dual 1GB ports with link aggregation slash failover support and 2 USB 3.1 Gen 2, 5 gigabits per second, ports. With more drives, RAID 5, 6 and 10 become available. 